More smoking content than a Jamaican spliff. You're listening to Blunt Talk on Renegade Talk Radio. Renegade Nation, Renegade Talk Radio. My name is Richie along with Marla. It's a Tuesday and we're still alive for another day. We have a really cool guest on today. Uh, In the music business, which we have dabbled in a few times ourselves here and there, his name is Sorantos, and uh, he's been around for a little bit of time, and he is growing in popularity on the internet. So we're going to have a little little chat with him. Hi, Marla. How are you? I'm doing really great. Welcome to Sorantos, and welcome, Renegade Nation. Sorantos, so how are you? And where are you, anyway? I'm in the uh, Chicago area, and I'm Chicago doing great area. today. How are you guys doing? Cool. Well, yeah, we're doing good. We're sitting in Maui. We're, we're just in Maui l- overlooking the ocean. <laughs> yeah, everybody gets nice. <laughs> Yeah, the studio overlooks the ocean. So we... Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, we <laughs> look out. sounds great. I want to come out there. Yeah, everybody come on does. Come out. Come on out. We like to party and have a good time, play the music, and... Uh, Smoke a little bit of doobie and just kick back. And, <laughs> and I haven't worn I haven't worn a suit in how many years now? Ten years or something? Oh, whatever. Geez. Oh, geez, it's been so long. Well, I, I use it medicinally. I wouldn't even know. I'm how to, ailing. Yeah, I wouldn't even know how to tie a Windsor <laughs> knot. I'm so bad off. <laughs> anyway, so we have Sorantos Renegade Nation, and um, Sorantos is a uh, artist, and he is growing. Like I said earlier in the uh, what I said earlier, what, why are you looking at me like what? Mm. So, Aren't you a comic also? You talking to him or me? You, of course. Oh, uh, yeah, comic, I don't know. I try to be a little sarcastic and have fun with things, but I don't know if I would say I'm a comic. Okay. Well, I've just lost some your stuff, that's all. I'm asking Richie if he's a comic. I'm the comic. Yeah, you're a comic. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You're everything. You're so, you're so great. <laughs> so, um, Sorantos, describe your sound in one ramble on a sentence. Just to, yeah, to describe tell, what it is. Tell us all about I'm, it. I'm, I'm, when, did, when did you get started? Okay, I guess I'll try to answer both questions. I uh, got started probably about two and a half years ago. Started releasing things in public this year. So 2014 is the year that I technically started releasing my stuff. First song came out January 2nd of 2014. And to answer your other question, if I could describe my sound, what I tried to pattern myself you know, off of is basically an 80s rocker mixed with today's modern rock and soft pop kind of music so that's kind of the sound that i think i'm going for and that best represents me why i identified the 80s sound you did immediately you, you did marla you yep. were right on target with that we like to thank our sponsors amazon and also italian delight here in maui so by the way yeah so you need to visit them <laughs> especially amazon and italian delight so um you know they, they need to go visit Toronto. Okay, yeah, and you need to go to, I'm going to have all that information on Renegade. So you'll be, oh, Renegade yeah. Nation, you'll be able to go uh, to the uh, Renegade site and you'll have all the links to Sorrento's music and you'll be able to download it and do whatever, uh, uh, whatever, whatever you know. So Sorrento's, what inspires you to make the music? Why is it that you're, you're coming out with this? Because the music industry is very, very tough and very hard to get through. Uh, you know, what, what inspires you to do this? Probably the simple answer is I've always been inspired by music. And I've always wanted to inspire people through my music. I might be a little bit late to the game. You know, I'm obviously not 18 years old doing this, but... You're not? It's definitely something... Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> but it's definitely something that's been on my mind forever, and I really felt that I needed to give it a shot. So I just decided after my father's death a couple of years ago that I was going to give it a shot. And I don't really mind that it's a competitive field. I think it's a... It's definitely a weird industry, and it's sure like yeah. other industries, but I, I like the challenge. Yeah, when I was uh, on the regular radio years ago, we used to... Regular? Uh, regular radio, terrestrial radio. They, there was all kind of... In fact, there was one guy, uh, Sorantos, I, when I worked at Cool FM in Phoenix, and uh, he was on the AM side, I was on the FM side. And he's he this guy, uh, t- it was Tommy James and the Shondells, and it goes you know back in the 60s, and they told, the program director told him, play this song, you need to play the, the A side of this song. And he said, screw you, I'm playing the B side, the B side's better. In fact, that's song happened to me, Moni Moni, which became a national hit over one person. <laughs> one person changed yeah. that whole band. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah it is. Are you, yeah. are, are you trying to get on regular radio with your music, or are you, are, are you trying to do that? Or I'm trying to do anything that I can, so certainly I would love to be nonstop on the radio, but 
I'm a little bit realistic in that I'm an unsigned artist. I don't have a label. I don't have a huge marketing budget. Mm-hmm. You know, America's stuff, you got know, talent. To be honest, so I'm hoping to get more and more fans behind me. My email list is growing. Where eventually I won't have a choice but to keep playing my stuff on the radio, and hey. uh, that's kind of my goal. Serrano, do you do concerts and sell CDs and all that good stuff? Technically, what I've done is release one song every month. So the 11th song is being released in November, and in November the actual CD is going to go out for sale. So it hasn't officially hit the stores yet, but uh, at this point you can download the first eight songs on iTunes or Spotify, or it's everywhere pretty much. Yeah, you're on it, all the songs. Yeah. People yeah. can look for it, it's there. Yeah, have you done uh, you know coffee shops and that type of thing, just uh, hanging out in bars? Do you do any bar, you know, hanging out in you know, nightclubs and, and doing that type of thing? You know what, I really don't. I have done stuff in the past, but I performed at the Toronto Music Festival mm-hmm. um, in May. And it's, it's very interesting when you're a solo music artist, basically the band that I hired, you know, they're not vested in my music because it's all mine. And you have to hire people to practice with or rehearse, and you have to hire <laughs> them to play gigs. They all have stuff going on, so they didn't really want to rehearse once a week because I'm very picky and I keep rehearsing by myself and I keep singing everywhere I can. But at the end of the day, one of the things that is more of a challenge than I thought it'd be is to get a good set of guitarists. People bass, that will you know, show up. You know, get a band that. <laughs> yeah, that's um, right, Marlon. People that will show up. What about, what? I got. A, I have a question for you, Surrounders. What about American Idol or uh, America's Got Talent or any of those type of shows? Have you tried to uh, to get on those shows to, to get... Uh, you know, no, I actually, funny story, many, many, God, American Idol has been out many years, 10 years, 12 years, something like that. Something like that, yeah. yeah but uh, when it first came out, I actually thought about going on, but the last time I actually looked into it, I think you had to be younger than 25. And uh, when I looked at it, I was right over 25 or something like that. I don't know what the rules are at this point. They don't care. But I, yeah, at this point, I don't want to do that because I've heard a lot of bad the bands and the artists get signed into these deals. They can't get out of them. They're 360 deals. They get forced to do all. And it basically is signing with a huge label. And I don't think I'm ready for anything like that, to be honest with you. So I'm so kind you of just trying to go with direct. Little label. Yeah, I want to sign with a little label that's going to grow. <laughs> and I, I was yeah. involved in the music industry, you know, going back through, you know, the 70s and forever. the 80s and 90s. Yeah, forever. And I've seen a lot of musicians R- get Richie's, screwed over. Richie's more ancient than dirt. I'm more ancient than dirt. Thank you, Marlon. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and I, I uh, really uh, uh, like the new artists, and they are trying to get airplay, and it's all about the airplay. Um <gasps> Richie was the first one to spin the first Madonna song. Yeah, that's right. I was, really? uh, yeah, wow. I was in a bar. Uh, I was a DJ back in the early '80s, and some dude came up to me. And of course, it's Paola. What they what they did was, hey, dude, man, you you know you got to play this song, man. And I go, <clears throat> what song is it? I have a thousand people on the dance floor, Sir Serrano, so I'm not really you know uh, worried about, about this guy. And he's bugging me and bugging me. And I go, what are, what do you what do you want? So he says, just put this on and play it in cue, so you you get a feel for it and. See if you, I, we want you to play it. So I put it in queue, and it was, it was Holiday with Madonna. And uh, next thing I know, he paid me, I think it was 500 bucks to play it. And the next thing you know, three weeks later, it was a number one hit all over the United States. And they hit New York, Philly, Baltimore, D.C., Dallas, all at the same time. It was amazing. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's amazing. what they do. You know, you got to get out there. And, and uh, so on the promotion, I mean, that was back in the 80s. Now with the Internet, you can have hundreds of thousands of people right. downloading your music and you can promote it yourself. And I've been a hardcore uh, um, individual with the music industry that you don't need a label now. All you need. That's right. All you need is the Internet and to uh, like you're doing right now, marketing your music out there to the masses of people. And you can collect the money and you can market yourself. And you do you really need them and you really need to be tied up in this in this knot that you can't get out of well it looks to me like you really you know put a lot of time into your videos and your vocals and obviously you're writing the songs so when you're in studio you know you you have backup players or do they show up yeah so it's it's, uh, it's very, first of all, before I answer, did Madonna ever say thank you? No. No, okay, I was just curious. Yeah, no, no, nobody said thank you. They All they did was they paid us to play that song, and the next thing you know, everybody, 
in the country, every radio station was playing that song, and, and then wow. her career was launched. So to answer your question, when I look at most of the music that I create, what I basically do is I start in Logic, which is a program on the Macintosh. It's uh, Pro Tools is the PC kind of equivalent, so they're probably the two most well-known programs for making music and doing all this stuff. And I'll throw different music melodies and get it all together, um, all the lyrics I've written. And then what I'll do when I think it's ready for production, I will record all the vocals not in a studio, but in my family room, which does not have great acoustics. But mm -hmm. um, and then I'll hire talented musicians that can, you know, lay down a live guitar that sounds better than the thing I've thrown together. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't. I guess I don't consider myself a talented musician. I think I can throw things together, but everything that you hear is pretty much all live. You know, you should what really, I've, really try a recording studio. Oh my God! Yeah. Well, the problem with that is it definitely there's an expense to that. Yeah, we know and, about uh, expenses. I've, <laughs> yeah, I've probably gotten about maybe probably about forty, fifty songs that I'm working on, and it's kind of great to see the evolution. I. I don't know if this is a good idea, but what I did is I kind of literally re am releasing them in the order that I made them. So it's kind of really cool to see the progression of how much my voice is. Um, I've recaptured my vocal quality in the last couple of years, and the stuff is just sounding better and better. And I know, you know, if I was with a label, they'd say, forget that old stuff, do the new stuff, or re-record in a studio. And I think, again, I don't know what the future is going to hold. I can't say I'm not going to re-record some of the, the stuff, but it's just, just kind of what I'm doing. That's really interesting. What, so, what are your upcoming projects? What do you What do you to share with Renegade Nation? What What is upcoming in the next uh, few months? I know you have the releases he's, he coming has out. A he's got a yeah. finished so release. Of his I guess album. I'll give you some inside information here, which nobody really gets unless they join my email list. Um, even though I'm active on social media, some of the big surprises. I mean, the email list finds them out sooner. So, one of the things, if people check out all this stuff online, I try to interact every day on social media, and every week I have something for the fans. So. The first Tuesday, it's a new song every single month. The second Tuesday, it's a new music video every single month. The third Tuesday, there's a funny video. And the fourth Tuesday, there's a whiteboard video that I've made. But the new thing that's going to start actually probably next week is there's going to be, I'm basically writing a fiction fantasy book. And each chapter mm -hmm. is going to be released each month. And each chapter correlates to the song. So the first one correlates to not where I want to be. And it's kind of interesting. So I have some catching up to do from this year, but hopefully by January of next year, every month you'll get a new chapter. And it's kind of a cross between, it really is fiction fantasy to keep them kind of hooked where they read these 16, 18 pages. And then it's almost like watching, uh, you know, Vampire Diaries or something. They, they can't wait to see what I the next chapter show. holds. And, um, <laughs> you know, again, it's different. It's not something, I mean, I've never heard of a, of a musician or an artist do anything like this, but... I got some cool surprises in store for uh, the next six months too. So, cool. I'm trying to be different and well, keep the fans engaged and keep them uh, on yeah, my side. Keep that creativity flowing. That's what. Sets well, that's you what apart. the fans want. The fan, the fans out there are looking for something new and different. They're mm -hmm. always doing that. And so, the internet is one of the the best places. So, when we come back, we're going to take a break. We're going to play a little bit of the Sorrentos music, and we're going to ask us Sorrentos, do you feel that the internet is helping you? as an independent artist and I what are the I already answered that well I, I want to answer it because a lot, a lot of people like to know and uh, I know that he answered that but I want to ask that question again because okay. it is important I'll okay so we're, we're going to take a break Renegade Nation we're going to take a break we're going to play more of Sorrento's music I'm going to go to the sec Yay. the third one here here we go we're going to go to the sex uh, yeah the third one I said what's the name of this one Sorrento's this one is called I Love to Love You Too I Love to Love You Too Hey, look, this is really good music, this man. Is, Listen to this. This is very 80s disco. Yeah, it's 80s disco. Okay, we're going to leave you. We're going to play a little bit of it, and then we're going to fade out. The Renegade Nation will be right back. Richie and Marla with Sorrentos out of Chicago, and we'll be right back. Hang in there. Welcome back, Renegade Nation, Renegade Talk here in Maui with Richie and Marla. We have our special guest, Sorrentos. He's a musician out of Chicago, making some waves on the internet. Listen to this great music. 
We're going to put all the links on the page so you can download it and go to YouTube and do whatever you need. But listen to this. I love it. I love interviewing you on upcoming artists. It's so refreshing. I'm not really good stuff, man. This is all done on a computer in Sorrentos' living room. Can you imagine if it was in a studio? Hey, you're recording studios out there. You need to get your shit together, man, and get this guy in the studio. Sorrentos, welcome to the show. Welcome to Renegade Talk in Maui, where we don't sugarcoat shit, and we just say it the way it is. A uh, question I have is, do you feel like the internet is helping you as an independent artist grow, and, and, and can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I absolutely do, and I think the challenge for me as a solo music artist, again, because of the lack of significant marketing budget, anything you get into early, like Justin Bieber got into YouTube early, at this point, social media is overdone, the internet is overdone, YouTube is overdone, so everyone's kind of looking for that next big thing or that next wave of what is going to differentiate them. And to me, you know, I certainly appreciate the music industry. I've tried to read a lot of books about the history of the music industry any biography I can get my hands on. But at the end of the day, I think what's unique about each artist is yourself, your set of experiences that makes you who you are, that drives you to make the music that you do. Some people will listen to you and say, hey, your voice is terrible. Other people will love your voice. You know, so I think you have to try to stay true. true to yourself. And I think the internet is great. And I, like everyone else, I'm just trying to figure out Again, what is the right thing to do? I can tell you on social media what I've tried to do. I follow different artists, uh, famous artists, indie artists. And to me, the one thing I swore I was never going to do is ask people to buy anything. And I know that I'm leaving money on the table. I don't have splash pages where people are forced to give me their email to sign up on my email list and all the, the other different things that people do. But at the end of the day, I want people to feel no pressure if they follow me on social media. It's me. It's not an ad agency. It's not a marketing agency. And all they're saying is, hey, come to my show. Hey, buy my new single. Hey, buy my new CD. Mm -hmm. Buy my T-shirt. You are so the ad So everything is out there. <laughs> I certainly have merch for people to buy. I certainly have singles and videos and all that. But I want people to get to know me. And I'm revealing myself slowly, mostly through social media. But it's me. It's not an ad agency. I'm not being fake. When I come on these interviews, I'm telling people exactly who I am. What was the inspiration to some song? And I wrote the lyrics, so I don't have to pretend, you know. The other thing that's weird about the music industry is I never realized until the last couple of years how many people don't do anything. They claim that here's my new CD, but they haven't written the lyrics. I they know, isn't that you know, awful? They figured out the melody. They're just buying songs from other people. And that was such a huge eye-opener for me, and I couldn't believe it. To me, when I sing a song of mine, the lyrics are mine, they're from my heart, and I don't have to really memorize them. I don't have to get amped up and, and have a manager tell me, hey, show more emotion. I mean, it's me, it's my song. I think you should wear I wrote a, it. You should wear you know, I, I know a, exactly why I wrote it. You should wear um, a, a leopard suit like, you know, Katy Perry. Hear me roar. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, one of the things about the music industry today, and ex exactly, I'm sorry, I hate her. <laughs> exactly what you said, Sorantos, is that it's coming from you. It's coming from your heart, and I think a lot of people right now um, are are missing that uh, from the uh, current artist. Yes, Marla. That's my favorite type of music. Music yeah. written by the band, the lyricist, you, you know, wh whomever. Well, you know, going, 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 getting, getting to the music industry, there's a lot of great artists out there, like your, yourself, Serranos, who don't get the breaks, who don't get in, who do not get airplay, or go on uh, terrestrial talk shows to promote their stuff and their music and how they feel about things. And that's one of, uh, with the internet, where you can actually do that and really grab this grassroots audience that builds over a period yeah. of time. And now you have control of your fan base. And then that's when these record companies come forward 
flying at you and they want to sign you to deals because they want that listener base. And I would Excuse never sign. Like, like, yes, they Mar- want the money, honey. Well, yeah, well, that, that, that's what it re- <laughs> equates to, Marla, the money. So you got this huge fan base that you built by yourself and then they come in and they want to take it over and tell you what to do. And I've been a firm believer for a, a long time. In fact, in the, in the music industry, back in my days, which I don't want to get really into heavily, but we tried to get the record companies back in the late 90s to do, do the internet w- way of doing things like 99 cent downloads and they blew us out because they wanted to sell one a CD they, for 20 bucks for one lousy song that was good. They kicked your skinny ass yeah. right out of Capitol. Yeah, they, 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 kicked, they kicked things right on the street. <laughs> Get out, you losers. Well, they didn't want to deal with us but, but eventually Steve Job, uh, Jobs or whatever his name was from Apple finally Job. uh, Jobs did it. But um, So you have over 450,000 Twitter followers and 160,000 Facebook likes. That's really good. Actually, the numbers now, the Twitter is almost a million. Wow. Facebook is about half a million. I, you know, I kind of glance at them, but I don't obsess over them like I did when I was first starting. Right. Well, you have so, a huge following. A lot of people so like, love your music then. Do you sit in Twitter and, you know, Tweet. Do you sit in what Twitter I, tweet? <laughs> You're going to keep correcting, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, Twitter, what Twitter. Did. What okay. I try to do, my strategy is certainly when there's a new song or a new video, I certainly tweet and Facebook and Tumblr about it, but what I try to do is every morning, whatever is happening, if it was the Emmys or if it was, you know, whatever's in the news, I'll put a link to an article from Yahoo News, Google News, Absolutely. Uh, USA Today, just one of the papers, the Chicago Trib or sometimes, and I'll, I'll put my spin on it, you know, so they'll actually know how I feel about something. Mm-hmm. And of course, I kind of avoid religion and politics, but you're finding out my personality and then at the end of the night I try to put another tweet or post and that might be a funny picture that might be a picture of me it might be about the new video it might be something a fan sent in so again I don't want to inundate people I'm not going to tweet 800 times a day like some people do Ah, I think to me two is okay and if I can't sometimes there's like 10 things that happen in a day that I'm like hey wow I'm up to number two on Reverb Nation in the world Mm -hmm. that's a great ranking and I want to put it out there but I might get something else that I think is cooler so this way I kind of filter it so the fans aren't going to get 20 posts a day I try to say okay what's the most important thing I want them to know about me today yeah you're selling you basically yeah what what about charity work do you do a lot of charity work in Chicago or around the country or yeah what I've tried to do also and again I didn't do this when I first started I started doing social media and talking about you know, my music about six months before I released the song. And I did build up a following. And one of the things people were like, oh, you're full of shit. You know, you want to donate proceeds to charity. And I think when people, if I ever take off and I do well and they find out what I really do for a living, I think they're going to understand the charity angle. And my charity angle is very simple. Each song, I donate a third of profits from that song, whether it's music, video, merch, from concert sales, if I ever, you know, go to concert to that charity and I pick a charity so for the first song Not Where I Want to Be the double meaning to that song for me I picked the charity of the American Cancer Society Mm -hmm. because obviously I thought about my dad my dad died of cancer and cancer is not where anybody wants to be so when you read those lyrics yeah it's about a guy that turns 30 that is like wow my 20s are gone did I take that chance am I happy with where I'm at did I always want to be a football player or a rock star or something am I missing out and it's a really, it's a transition from the 20s to the 30s, but the double meaning is it's talking about cancer. You know, cancer is not where anybody wants to be, the, the surgery, the chemotherapy, the radiation. So I've tried to do that with every single song, and I pick a different charity for each song to support. That's great. That's really, really That's unique. Cool. That's really unique that, uh, that you're doing that. Um, so I was going to ask, other than your father, where does your inspiration come from? My biggest inspiration, obviously, I I would definitely have to say my family and my father specifically, but growing up, I'm of Greek descent, and I grew up, my dad had a restaurant. Oh, you're the hardest worker I ever met in my life. We always listened to music, you know, whether it was Greek music, American music, and I was just fascinated because if I was sad or depressed, I'd listen to a song or two, and I'd, I'd be even sadder and more depressed, but then I'd listen to something happier, and it could cheer me up. And I think it really taught me, one of the things I think I'm very good at is uh, empathy. So I think I can put myself in someone's shoes 
even if I don't have cancer, I could put myself in their shoes and write a song about it. I've always wanted to try to put myself in a mind frame to say, you know, what's that person going through? They're homeless, they're on the street. With practice and years and repetition, it's enabled me to be able to write some really cool songs because a lot of the artists, you know, when I look at them and I listen to all kinds of music, sure, it's a love song, it's a breakup song. It's Some of my music that's going to be coming out in the next couple of years are things I don't think anyone's ever written about. That's great. Um, so I'm th- so... They're unique stories, whether they're my story, someone else's story, but... That's kind of what I'm trying to do. Well, a song is really a, a story, and that's it right. Is. When you're, you go and you're from your 20s to your 30s, and you're thinking, did I do this, or did I, I should have done that, or did I take the chance to do that? Well, that time has passed, and now you're into your 30s. So I, I totally agree with you that the music lyrics are so important to people's lives and what people are actually going through, right. uh, whether they're having a... T- yes, Marla, Mark? Oh, just by the way, we do have a music station called Sky Pilot Radio. Yeah, we play all, on that. We play 80s all the eighties cla- through nineties. Yeah, classic hits. But uh, yeah, cool. But it's really yeah, cool to I'm have sorry, that seventies <clears throat> through nineties. Seventies through nineties, Marla. It's, <laughs> and it's cool we to have switching stuff around. It, it's cool to have uh, a a musician and a singer songwriter take it like from that point and. People can listen and they can go, yeah, I'm going through that, or I know somebody that's going through that, or they got cancer, or they got whatever they have, whatever the problems are, and they can relate to that. And that's what, that's what stands out in music. People want to hear that. That's the way I feel. I have a great question. Go ahead, Marla. Who are or is your favorite vocalist? That's a great question, you know, because when I look at stuff, I think of, okay, favorite band, favorite singer, favorite, right. favorite lyricist, well, favorite that's what musician, I meant. I just couldn't think of They're all word. different. So when you say vocalist, <laughs> I think of someone who's just a great singer. And to me, you know, I think of like Josh Groban. I think of obviously some of the classic influence, influences, but so currently nowadays, um, and again, this is so hard because... So many artists are auto-tuned, and so many oh, artists, God, you don't even no know, kidding. you think someone has a great voice, but they don't. It's, all, it's all like <laughs> produced in the studio. And I think, and I'll give you an example from my work, a couple years ago, I had very bad allergies, and I had asthma, and I was on steroid inhalers, and that definitely affects your voice. Mm-hmm. And as I weaned myself off that stuff, and I started training vocally, and I have no vocal coach, I do it all myself just with practicing and repetition and hard Richie work. Richie had one. But my voice has gotten a million times better. So it's interesting to hear some of the songs you put, especially more authentic things that aren't tuned. Another song you'll be like, oh, this is a dance song. I want it more tuned. And it's great to hear other feedback because it's almost like you can't win. What I've tried to do is I don't want to sound the same on every single song. I listen to the new Maroon 5 song, and I'm like, okay, that's great. You know, Maps is a decent I song. I don't but like it at all. To me, all. I want my music to be varied, but I also want my vocal style to be varied. So mm-hmm. I really respect artists that, and I don't really, I can't really tell you someone that changes their style all the time. And I'm not talking about Except for Madonna. Two different styles, <laughs> but just where, you know, one song, if you listen to all my music and you listen mm-hmm. to next year's CD, well, yeah, John- I, have a, I have a set sound, yeah. but I want it to be different. Yeah, but it's it's kind of like when you go back to listening to Pink Floyd or Queen or Moody Blues. I mean, there's, you know, they're so imaginative and their music is just so fabulous. And Freddie Mercury and Queen, he, he wrote the lyrics to the, the songs. And I remember I used to always I used to always think I knew he was putting songs together, you know, because they switch over. And sure. uh, I just recently watched a documentary about it, and one of the band members mentioned how Freddie liked to put two songs together, and that was very unique. That's why he was a great artist. Yeah, well, yeah. he was just this great singer and performer. Mm-hmm. One of my, my favorites was uh, Frank Sinatra. He really put the emotion into... Oh, he sure did. He, 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 that's, that's what's he missing. He makes you cry. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to take a break. And Renegade Nation, we're going to continue on with Sorrentos after the break. We're going to play some more music. And uh, we love this music. And we hope you do too. So stand by. Renegade Nation, we'll be right back as soon as I press the play button. Here we go. It'll, <laughs> here we go. 
So we'll be right back. Sorrentos on from Chicago. He's a musician uh, working his way up the ladder. And one of these days, he's going to be a big one name. One of these days. Renegade Nation will be right back. Richie and Marla hanging out with you. Lately, I hear the melodies of sorrow. Renegade. Nation, Renegade Talk in Maui with Richie and Marla. We have Sorrentos on, a, a musician, artist out of the Chicago area. He's on the air with us today talking about music and why music is the way it is and what he's doing about the music industry. Here's a tune. Listen in. on Sky Pilot. I like this. Surrounders, this is really, really good. Thank you. You must have women swarming all over you, Sorrentos. Yeah, you, uh, girls. No, look. no, not really. Oh not really. my goodness! You girls, will. go to his site. I'll be hanging out with. I'll be a roadie with you, to, just to get the girls. <laughs> You'll be security. <laughs> I'll be your roadie. I'll fly to Chicago and be your roadie. Yeah, you're gonna have to screen everybody for me. Yeah, I'll screen everybody. Yes. I don't believe a word you just said. A, he is so good looking. Oh my god. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, I'm just going to use Sorrentos to get the girls for myself, see? Well, Since no, he's so that's good why you have me as yeah, your Yeah, you're my wing, wing woman. woman. Yeah, yeah, well, you get more women for me. I can be Sorrentos' more other wing yeah, woman. Okay. All right, you so. two can <laughs> strut around the beach with me. All the women that's will be right. staring and drooling. They love me. I, that's And him. I yeah, think so, he's oh, coming Sorrentos. with us. Oh, he can come with us. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. So, anyway. And then I'll just drop you two foot off at somebody's picnic blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, Marla. Renegade Nation, you know and how then, it is. And then I'll swim away like, just like uh, a, a okay. little mermaid. Yeah, okay. Now, today's show is really relaxing for me. I mean, it was so, so depressing yesterday with oh that nonsense. Oh, my God. Crap the going news. On. Shh. Shh. We're not going to say anything about it. No. Just be quiet. Anyway, we have Sorrentos on from Chicago. He's an independent artist. Renegade Nation, we will have all the links on the Renegade page. They'll also be up on Facebook and Twitter and all that social stuff. And also, uh, the show, this show will also be on Sorrentos' website, and he'll be promoting and it out there. And our website. And, our, and, our, yeah, and on Podomatic forever and, and ever Podomatic. and ever and then And then Stitcher, ever. too. We'll have it on Stitcher. Yeah. Stitcher is, uh, we're number, you know what? We jumped from 11,000. We, we were down like the 4,000, then we went yes, to 11. We were, now we're down to 7,000 out of 30,000 podcasts or number 7,000 or something. We were down pretty well, low. I don't know what they're doing over well, there. Well, no, no, because we were, we um, had a little... Uh, oh, we took a break, yeah. Well, it wasn't really a break. It was like more like sickness, but... Mm. <laughs> so anyway... Any, no, no, anyhow, uh, on podcasts, though, we remain around number 50 and uh, number one. You know, Podomatic, we're news like in talk. the uh, top 50 and we're number uh, two or three news talk. Yeah, usually Podomatic. we're always one, uh, number one. And we love to thank Renegade Nation, everybody in Spain it's and Europe. Thank you. It's because of you, Renegade Nation. And we want you to check out Sorrentos, download his music, email him, do whatever you want, and make this guy uh, into a star. Make him get the word out, Renegade Nation. And you know what to do when I say the prophet says do it, you do it. Anyway, going back to the next song, the song is coming out in November wait, or December. Wait, wait, Hold wait, on for wait, a second. Wait, no, Marla. wait. Before we move on, I just wanted to say... There were little tones in there where Sorrento sounded like the Beach Boys. Really? And he's the only one singing. Yeah. No, I didn't hear that. Yeah. I did. You talking about nothing to hide? 
Yeah, yes. nothing to hide. Yes. Yeah, some of the critics actually said, yeah, a little bit of Beach Boys. And that's, um, See? It actually, was kind of funny. The last interview I did, they thought that'd be a great song for like a TV show, like a Friends kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. This is a really good song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, See, Rich, you're making fun of me, and I'm right I'm not, making, I'm not making fun of you. You are a... Uh, you, I, you have your shit together, Marley. Yes, you do. <laughs> you are a, a musician's friend. You will help them out. Anyway, so one of the songs, Renegade Nation, that's coming out in the fall, we were just talking about it off air, and then on air before we took the break, was Sinatra. And Sinatra had this this um, um, aura about him that just sucked you right in, and everything that he ta- he sang about was, he was talking about his life and his issues and his problems with women and all this stuff, and, it, and, and to this day... Uh, Sinatra is really, really uh, listened to. Even the Hawaiians here that I know, even, they even like Sinatra. Everybody, Everybody loves Sinatra. But the Sinatra. reason, the reason Renegade Nation that Sinatra was so popular was because he told you a story, whether it was a love story, a breakup story, a happy story, whatever kind of was. And then he had Nelson Riddle in the orchestra and the orchestration all mob. Yeah. And so uh, Sorantos is going to have a song coming out in the fall. Am I right on that, Sorantos? Yeah, it's coming out actually in November. In, in it's, November. Uh, the last song off the CD, it's called Let's Call It Love. And it's a, uh, it's technically a jazz song, but it's been compared to a lot of the Sinatra stuff with some of the reviews it's gotten. Wow. Wow. So that's what I like. I like that type of, uh, that type of music they well, have well, dropped. Just, just the way he would change the octave of his voice mm-hmm. and the look on his face. You're in love. <laughs> Is you Frank Sinatra? No. Oh, oh, you're talking about, I thought you were talking about Sorrento. I'm sorry. So yeah. Sinatra, yeah. <laughs> well, he, not, he used the, his emotional, the emotions I'm came out. I'm not interested in being part of the mob. Okay, I don't know where you're going with that. <laughs> I'm talking about... Frank Sinatra. A, Sinatra's emotional face, the way he, when he mm-hmm. sang the song, it all came out through his face and his, and his voice and his had, eyes, but everything. He had, but he had that certain way of singing when you watch him, just certain octaves he'd go up and then he'd go down yet it was very very distinct yeah very distinct and that, and that, I think that the my, my feeling is the music industry is missing that type of talent and I think that going into recording studios and they make everybody sound the same and I've heard a lot of complaints that people go to concerts to see these current artists and they don't and they sing- and they stink and suck because basically the uh, the recording studios make them sound really good, but when they're on stage in concert, you're not hearing what you should be hearing. Is that right, Sorantos? I mean, have you been to a, a bunch yeah. of concerts? I mean, so you want to hear the real artists. You want to hear the artist in the studio and, and they and, and, but, and but, record but, it. But yes. nowadays, they just change it. The artist doesn't even sing, or if they are, it's all electronically being changed. And I agree with you. They do that. Sorantos, how, how do you feel about that? I mean, what happens if you get signed by a record label? Would you be more in charge of them and, and instead of them telling you what to do, you tell them what to do? Because you're the one that's going to make the money. You're the artist. You're the one that generates the fan base. You're the one that generates the money. How would you work that out if somebody came by and said, hey, we like you, we'd like to sign you? Well, to be honest, I would never sign with a label unless they let me keep doing what I want to do because... The one thing we talked earlier when I performed live at the Toronto Music Festival, I always wanted to have, you know, one of the things that initially some people describe me as an emotional rock. And I, I think emotion is very key. And you don't want to just sound auto tuned and hit every pitch perfect. And there's some things where even if it's a little off key, I leave it because my whole thing is I want to be real. I don't want people to see me live and be like, that sounds nothing like him. I mean, certainly you can change. You can change some of the reverb and some of the stuff on echo mm-hmm. versus uh, club sounds, you know, because your songs like are a little bit different like if Peter it's a dance Frampton. song or a rock song. But I want people to, number one, know about the emotion. So the song you just heard, Nothing to Hide, some people loved the sound. They said your vocal style is great. Other people are like, there's not enough emotion in it. But if I'm singing every single song the same way, that song, it was sung more like a like a calm kind of rock, which really, I think, went with the music, which was more upbeat. So at the end of the day, I love being able to experiment. I did a little rap song. I did a country song. I did a dance song. I think my, my main genre is going to be soft rock pop, but I would never sign with a label that said, look, we want all your songs to sound exactly like Maroon 5. We want all your songs. I, I just wouldn't do it. 
because I love experimenting. I think the fans have come to expect that. Um, especially, you know, one of the things I haven't released to the public yet that I will on your show here is in November, one of the surprises I was going to have for the fans is I'm also releasing a Christmas CD. Oh, and cool. the Christmas CD is going to have four originals. It's going to have like uh, 12 covers and it's going to have also 12 Christmas short stories with sound effects and things that I've read the story. So on those, you're going to see a wide variety in vocal style and it's definitely more authentic. It's not tuned. It's definitely, um, I think they're going to really appreciate that. And that's kind of what I'm going for. You know, I, when I was just thinking about the reggae music, Marlo. They do that. The reggae music people, uh, they, they, they're all original. They do their own thing. They're, you know, they're, they're never on the same key or same vocal key. They're always uh, no, doing things differently. They are. They are? Really? I love reggae. Yeah, but the, I, I, what I'm saying is the artists are, are not staying in the same uh, arena. They're, they're, going, they're doing different things. When it's but reggae, they, it's reggae. Well, you I know, know. I'm talking about the verbiage and the, and the lyrics and that type of thing. And, and like oh, the, what Serrano is saying. Awesome. Yeah, I know it's awesome, but I'm saying that you know, Serrano is saying exactly what I'm saying about reggae. They do different things. So when they're on stage, you hear what they did in the studio. You hear the same thing on the stage. That's, that's what I'm at. Oh, that's, that's totally true. True. I've gone to uh, reggae concerts where they sound exactly the same mm-hmm. as their album. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, that, that's the whole key. I think people want that. They don't want to, you know, hear studio musicians and then they go to a concert and pay $100 or $150 a ticket. And they, and then, oh, and you know what really pisses me off surrounding some Renegade Nation when they lip sync it. When yeah, they lip sync. I hate that. I, Especially if you've paid 100 or $200 to go. Yeah. Break out that, the tomatoes. <laughs> Break out the tomatoes. Is yeah, that what okay. I saw it happen to Prince. Was he lip syn- lip syncing? No, he was an unknown, and he was opening. He, there was it was a Stones concert at the Coliseum, mm-hmm. and it was the Rolling Stones supposedly their last concert ever. And as we yeah. all know, <laughs> that's been going what, on for years. I know, as we all know, Jagger's still at it, and um, and then they had Guns N' Roses. And it was really awesome. Axl Rose, it was, like I said, the Coliseum. He jumped off the stage and ran around the whole track. I was sitting in front of t- Mr. Tom Hanks. Oh, I got a better seat than he did. And then the uh, opening act was some dude nobody ever heard of before, and his name was Prince. And I'm like, okay, Prince. <laughs> Nobody ever heard of him. And this concert started like at 11 and didn't end till probably the next day because they didn't want you to be all drunk. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, people were, so people were throwing heads of lettuce and tomatoes at him. It was hysterical. Wow. Did they have a farmer's market in front of the, uh, the, the auditorium? <laughs> People brought, you know, their ice chests to make lunch and everything. Oh, is that where they got the tomatoes and lettuce? Okay. Yeah. Wow. I had a lettuce, though. Wow. Yeah. I've never oh. seen that thrown at somebody. <laughs> That's hilarious. You stink. Throw the lettuce oh, head at him. You know how big that stage is? Like, they could actually mm-hmm. hit him. Well, he's making a comeback, by the way. Prince is. Oh, he is again. Yeah, he's going to. Yeah, yeah, does he have a name? Two CDs, I heard, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was on the news the other day in the entertainment news that he's making a comeback. I guess he's out of money. That's what they do when they run out of money. <laughs> That's right. They always come back. Well, I and mean, you know what? To me, also, the one thing I don't want to do, which I've seen repeatedly, whether they kind of hit their peak and then they break up because the band can't get along, or I hate the old way of doing it where you released a CD every two, three years, promoted it, fell off the face of the earth. To me, I'm going to do this till the day I die. There's absolutely no reason for me not to keep putting out songs. So you're not going to have, I'm not going to have a, even if I make it, I'm not going to have a 10-year hiatus or a two-year hiatus because <laughs> but that's it's all because about putting the music out there. That's because they're so busy in the studio recording the next CD. You know, if I was a musician and a singer-songwriter, I would be coming that, out with music all the time. Excuse. That's that's my that's yeah. that would be my job to to keep the fan base to keep right. it going, not take a two-year break or a ten-year hiatus and come back and say, "Oh, everybody's going to love me five. again." Well, Maroon Five, you know, like they, how many people they do, suddenly came back? Yeah, well, they had well, they're they're signed to a major label, and the label said, "We need to make money. Let's go." They're on their contracts. So come they, out with something. And then they turned out with that '90s sound. I just about lost my piece. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, and then the fans wait like eight years for a new, and it's the same sound. I mean, yeah, the, the, the yeah, the like, sound never changes. Yeah, and I think a lot of artists are, are you know, like you, Sarandos, are, are, are coming to the forefront of the change in the music exactly. industry. People are fed up and pissed off, like me, with the music industry. Uh, the, the radio stations play the same old stupid playlist over and over and over. Nobody gets a break. Nobody gets in, uh, and it's sickening. And people are um, going to the internet and finding new and, and inspiring art like yourself and saying this is a lot better than listening to this bullshit radio station that won't play any other type of music rack yeah. rack baby baby rack 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 <laughs> rack baby yeah. rack rack baby rack rack no. what is it I got a bit of hip hop rack rack city baby rack rack yeah so, so, so you know, the radio stations, I think, need to change their way. In fact, uh, Terrestrial Radio, Renegade Nation, whether you know it or not, are, they're having a lot of problems. And the problems stem from not promoting new artists like Sorrentos. They will not do it. They stay within their little world, and they keep it that way. And, and there's a lot of listeners disappearing and going to other areas they like the internet. They all get wealthy, hang out, and aren't they all part of the Illuminati? Yeah, okay, whatever Don't you, you see yeah. them? <laughs> the Illuminati, Don't, yes, don't you think they do that, though, because they have to keep their sponsors happy, and they don't really... Well, this is... I, I feel like, again, I wasn't around, you know, in the old days, but I feel like they probably tried new artists more often than they do now. Hell now yeah! Now I think they just got to keep sponsors happy. No, they did. I, like I, they, they did. A quarter they, of a million dollars to get your song played on well, real radio, and it takes a year to get in. In the 1970s, I mean, there must have been about a million one-hit wonders. Yeah, there was a lot of yeah. one-hit wonders that got in. But, you know, they, again, they could have been very talented people, and I'm not going to bring up a lot of names because I can't remember because of my Alzheimer's. But uh, the, those those singer-songwriters, they made it with a one-hit wonder, and then that was the end of them. And they, I guess the record companies looked at it like, hey, they're not going to do anything. They can't make any money for us. So the hell with them. And they disappeared. Yeah. So, yeah. And the radio stations, I think, uh, if they want to, back in the old days, we did, uh, back in the day, we broke a lot of great bands. Uh, I mean, a lot of great bands. Aerosmith was broken. Michael Jackson back in 1969. I mean, Michael Jackson, the Beatles. Look at the Beatles. I mean, right. all this new music, which they're... they're the Stones. The Stones. Jerry the and the Pacemaker. Birds. The Yardbirds. I mean, you can go on and on and on uh, with all these different... Uh, Gloria uh, Estefan uh, from... Uh, yeah, well, she was a new artist in the 80s, and she got that break. But it was yeah. different type of radio. When, 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 when you agree, Sorantos? Yeah, totally. Yeah, the Miami Sound Machine. Yeah, yeah the Miami Sound Stephon. Machine. Yep. Yeah, and a lot of people love the Miami Sound Machine. And today, nobody plays the Miami Sound Machine. Nobody. Nobody plays it. Yeah. Nobody. And that is sexy music to dance to. Yeah, it was sexy music. And they, who plays it is internet radio. I mean, the, the, again, I'm going back to radio, terrestrial, that will not play this music for their it, listeners. It's and like they the are. Same, huh? It's like the same 20 songs. That's over, right. Oh, over, over, over again. Over. And they drive you insane. I mean, uh, and when I was in radio, they, they did the same thing. I mean, we had a playlist. I know. But they would, we would always break in new new artists. We would always do that, which was, which was really good. And and um, I remember starting in the beginning of this uh, interview and this conversation where T Tommy James was, dis was discovered by one disc jockey out of Pittsburgh who I met in Phoenix. And when I met him, I thanked him. I said, thank you so much for doing that because Tommy James and the Shondells became a very, very well-known, very popular group. And they had great music for the time period that they were in. Yeah. So, Sorrento, so what's, um, are you have any, do you have any live performances coming up in the next uh, month or so? I, um, I, really hope to get to the point where I finalize my band because I have unfortunately I have to say no to some gigs because it, unless you have a band that you're gigging with and practicing with consistently I don't want to go perform I have no problem singing but I don't want to have a speaker behind me and no band <laughs> so yeah. that, that yeah. right now is my biggest challenge is getting uh, I didn't think it'd be that big of a challenge it wasn't that big of a challenge earlier but it seems like it is now and I I don't have an answer for that. I'm sure if I had a, a real manager uh, or a label, it wouldn't be a problem because I'm sure they can find many musicians and just kind of take care of it for me. But that's a challenge. Sorantos, you just may end up with a full backup band after this show. Yeah, or if you guys want to just come sing and dance behind me. Sure, I'm no, I don't me. think. <laughs> I'm a great go good dancer. Not me. You, you, oh, yeah, you'd be a great. You would attract a lot of attention to Sorantos, the two of you. Not me, though. 
I could be the announcer. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know what we we have like you just standing there, like maybe hitting a gong once in a while or something. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm the, yeah, thank you, Marla. That's what I'm good for. That's the only thing I'm good for, Renegade Nation, as you well know. You have a real. Yeah, no, yeah, you, yeah, you have yeah. that really rich says voiceovers. I used to. He has this really um, deep, like really terrifying I'm going voice. I'm to get you. I'm coming so to get you. You could put in like a, a few of those and he could just, you know, kind of I could yeah. be, you know, slide the, on over the mic and be like I could be the guy who does the uh, the voice track at the end of the song like uh, in Thriller with Michael Jackson. Yeah, uh, what the was deep his name? voice. Yeah, the deep voice at the end oh, of the song. Oh, you mean oh, uh, Vincent Price. Vincent Price, yeah. Thriller. Yeah, Vincent Price. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, remember I that? We have a Halloween song coming out next year, I think, but um yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, you do a voiceover. The I mean, voiceovers uh, inside music is really cool when they do that. that yeah, but that's, I love but, that. But that's called, what's the word? Creative. It's yes. creative. It yes, is. let's get creative. If we get creative, the record industry and people would buy more music. Now, Renegade Nation, you understand that. You listen to the same old shit over and over and over. The but same. if you get a little thump, bit thump, 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 thump. If you get creative... And force these radio stations to start putting on artists like Sorrentos. And if you start doing that and pounding them and call that DJ and say, why don't you play this song? I'm so sick of hearing the same old crap. They don't care because it's a program manager. Well, you can call. So I, I, all the program managers just need to go away. I remember when I got fired for playing a request. <laughs> when Serrano said. He got fired for playing a request. This lady calls I up. She says to me. I she's, didn't think that could happen. Yeah. She it says does. to me. I, and I didn't break format. It was an oldies format. And she calls me up and she goes, it's my anniversary. And could you play this song, which was in the format. So, but, but it wasn't on the playlist that I was supposed to be playing for that one hour or whatever the hell I was doing. Anyway, so. I said, you know what, honey, I'm going to do that for you and your husband because it's your anniversary and you're half naked on the Salt River and I'm going to do this for you. And I did it. And as soon as I did it, I was in deep shit because I wanted to please the listener. Wow. That's what I wanted to do. How ridiculous of you, Rich. Yes. How ridiculous of me. I should have told her to go fuck off. (laughs) How dare I'm not going to do that. I'm not playing your stupid song. (laughs) Uh, Call a program, and then I would have got in trouble for that, be, 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 for being nasty yeah. to the woman. Yeah, well, you can't win either way. But I think the radio stations need to look at new and upcoming artists and people like yourself, Sorrentos, that have this talent and that want to move forward and bring out this great emotional type of music and, that and, makes people feel good. And you're you're more than a musician. You're you know you're a writer. You're you're creative. Um, you know, you're a lot of things wrapped up into one, and you're very unique. Well, if you do get signed, I'll be your agent, Serantos. I'll be there for you. I, I will take okay. care of you. Yes. I'll be in your videos. Yeah, you can be you can be the, the blonde with the big boobs dancing, b- b- bouncing around. Do you want, like, a, lo- a long-haired, beautiful blonde in your you videos? You love torturing her, don't you? Yeah, I torture her all the time. It's been Renegade Nation I'm not tortured at all. Renegade Nation loves when I torture her. Yes. Right. I, in fact, I had a lady one time call me up and say, will you please leave Marla alone? <laughs> I go, shut up. I'm just know. an old sea hag. You're just an old sea hag, honey. <laughs> anyway. So uh, are you selling uh, on iTunes? Uh, is that doing anything for you, Sorantos? Yeah. I'm uh, everywhere. iTunes, Amazon, Spotify. Uh, some songs on Pandora got accepted. So wow. all over. And well, That's you know, good on Pandora. It takes a little bit of time. I'm signed up through ASCAP. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some stuff coming in, but obviously... At this point, I've spent a lot more money than uh, has come in. Yeah, yeah, we know that so feeling. Yeah, we, for charity at some point. yeah, we know that feeling. We know, we, we, yeah. know what, we know what that's like. But people are starting businesses and starting careers and in the music industry or talk radio. A lot of talk radio hosts are being fired and they're going yeah, to the internet. Talk radio is just going down the pooper. Down the pooper and it's coming back up the pooper through for the internet. Anyway, so um, what I'm going to do is I am going to play the first song. Which, what, what was the name? I can't believe you just said that. What? It was really ridiculous. Ridiculous what, stupid. What, what did I say that was ridiculous? I'm not even going to repeat anyway, Don't repeat so it. I'll gross. hear it back when I hear it and I'll say, I can't believe I said that. Anyway, so I say things and I, I don't even remember what I say because I'm getting we older. We have no idea what we say. Anyway. But I, the on Alzheimer's, the, you can blame that. Yeah, I can blame it on Alzheimer's. Uh-huh. And I got it from you, Marla. I can bang it. I bang yeah. my head on the wall at night, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
So, Sorantos, uh, give us the website address. Even though I'm going to put it up on the on the Renegade site, uh, you're, I, uh, can you tell the audience your website address? And then we're going to play the first song. And I'm going to put that on um, on Sky Pilot because the song is really, really good. And why not? We should be promoting it, and I'm going to put the it on. The one up. that I like? Yeah, the first one. The one that sounds like the Beach Boy. This one here. Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah, this one here. All right. Okay, so what's your what's your um, a website address, and uh, and then we're going to take off. Let the people know. Okay. The uh, so my name is Sorantos, S A R A N T O S, and the website is meloia dot com, which uh, basically means with words in Greek. So it's m e l o g i a dot com, and I'm on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram. So if you just check on the website or just Google Sorantos, it'll pop up number one and. I'd be happy to interact with you any way you want to get a hold of me. There you go, mm-hmm. Renegade Nation. Mm-hmm. Hear that, ladies? There you go, ladies. <laughs> okay. Sorantos, it was a pleasure having you on. We'll have you on again. Yes. We'll play the music. Sure, anytime. Anytime uh, you guys want, I'd be happy to. Okay, great. We we appreciate you coming on, and we had a great time talking with you, and it's a lot of fun, and we're going to promote the living daylights out of this. You have a great day. Have fun in Chicago. Tell all your friends we said hi, and we are out of here. Hello. Hello. my sound, what I try to pattern myself off of is basically an 80s rocker mixed with today's modern rock and soft pop kind of music. So that's kind of the, the sound that I think I'm going for and that best represents me. More smoking content than a Jamaican spliff. You're listening to Blunt Talk on Renegade Talk Radio.